this course is presented to you free of charge by TTJ Tech Services of www.ttjtech.biz and by Stir It Up of www.stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U, not an I. So that's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. TTJ Tech Services and Stir It Up are pleased to offer this course to you to the glory of God and to the benefit of all those who listen. Welcome, everybody. Once again, Trainer Matt coming at you, TTJ Tech Services, with session number two of the Midwinter Digital Cafe, Apple TV edition. Today, we're going to talk about actually how to navigate the Apple TV, and we're going to talk about how to use things like Control Center and so on, and then we're going to get into how different apps work and and the, the workflow that might work best for different people and actually sitting down to watch TV because this is a whole new experience, right? You don't have to just turn on the TV and flip through channels anymore. Uh, when you turn, when you wake up your Apple TV, you're not watching live TV. You've got a home screen just like your iPhone and iPad with a whole bunch of apps. And so how do we best find what we want to watch? So we're going to cover all of those things today as much as we can and then pick it up next week, of course. Now, um, I did say that I'd review the remote layout with you one more time uh, to make sure we all remember what that's like. And especially if you were not able to attend on Monday. Uh, so if you've got one, grab a remote, grab the popcorn, whatever you want to do, we're going to get started and we're going to take a look at this remote one. Once again, um, if you have the, uh, current remote, we're speaking to you. If you have the older Siri remote, well, it's similar, but it's just a little bit different. Um, it's, it's lacking a couple of the buttons and, you know, so on we we always teach to the latest and the greatest. So we're going to be teaching to the newest, uh, generations of Siri remote, uh, you'll know that you are uh, holding them properly when the buttons are on top and the bottom edge closest to your body will have the charge port. Uh, that's either a lightning port or a USB-C port, depending on which uh, generation of uh, Siri remote you have. On the right hand side, on the edge along the right side is a single long button. It feels kind of like the side button on your iPhone and it is the Siri button. And we press and hold that to talk to S-I-R-I. And we also press and hold that for dictation, which we're going to learn about today. So that's the side button. Moving up to the top of the remote, at the very top right corner of the remote is a single button. And that is your power button. And again, we said on most modern TVs, that will turn the television off and on. And it will... uh, allow you to, you know, control all your devices together there. Um, You can use that by pressing and holding it for about a second or two to turn on and off your television and wake and sleep the Apple TV. You can also press the back or TV buttons to turn everything on. And we're going to talk about those very soon. Now, that's the very right top right corner, that power button. Moving just to the left of it is a round circle, and that's your click pad. And it can be clicked or swiped, as we're going to describe in great detail in just a few minutes. Uh, But it does have all four directional arrows, like a D-pad, right? you got left, right, up, and down. And then it's got a click button in the middle as well. The center of it can be clicked. And so um, that center button, when you click it, is kind of like your select button. And uh, that's how you activate things. And we will definitely be discussing that in more detail. That's the click pad, that round circle. It also acts as a trackpad by default. We can disable that. There are benefits. There are, you know, again, we'll we'll cover all that. Okay, right now we're just doing button layout. Moving down from the circle, you have a series of buttons that is all together. Okay, the top left of those buttons in that series is sort of slightly concave, slightly indented in the middle, and it is your back button. Okay, pressing that button once, and repeatedly will take you back screen by screen, level by level. And uh, pressing and holding it will take you clear back to the home screen, no matter how deep you are in an app. And it'll do it without going through all of those menus first. This back button, if you're already on the home screen, pressing it again is going to take you to the screensaver. And then pressing it one more time takes you back to the home screen. 
Okay. So we can go back and forth there. Um, we're on this series of buttons just below the click pad, the top right of which, just to the right of the back button, is the TV button. Okay. Pressing this button by default will take you to the TV app to be discussed soon. And pressing it again takes you back to the home screen. If you press and hold this button, it will take you to Control Center. And we're going to learn about Control Center very soon as well. That's our right side button there on that, pa uh, on that panel of, of several buttons in a row. Now go back to the left. There's that concave button, that back button. And drop down one row, and you've got a round button that is your play pause button. And this will do just what its name suggests. Moving down one more row yet is the final button on the lower left, which is the mute button. And we said that currently it doesn't really mute when you have voiceover on. That might be by design because they don't want people to mute their speech or it might be a bug. We really don't know. Uh, but we said there are plenty of other ways to adjust audio if you don't want to hear it and things of that nature or, or what have you. So that is the mute button. And on the right hand side now, you've got this volume bar up and down. And just as you would suspect, okay? And that is your entire remote layout, okay? Now, the remote operates by Bluetooth and sometimes IR, sometimes infrared if you uh, need to for certain televisions and sound bars and so on. And then um, it has a built-in rechargeable battery. And so you will get months of use on a single charge. You'll be able to check the status of your battery uh, by the end of the day today. We'll teach you how to do that. By the end of the day today, you're going to know more than most people know about Apple TV, praise God, because we've got such a packed uh, curriculum for today. Um, and, and God's given us some really good ways of sharing that, praise the Lord. So we got uh, that coming for you. But you're going to know how to, ch how to check your battery status. But you're going to get months of battery use before you have to even think about that. And then you'll get a, a notification and voiceover will speak it if you're a voiceover user and say, you know, charge the battery or whatever. I don't even remember exactly the verbiage that it says. Um, and when it does say that, you just plug in the uh, remote using uh, your lightning or USB-C cable, depending on which remote you have. And um, you can use, if you already have a charger, like for an iPad or an iPhone, you know, plugged into the wall, plugged into, you know, the 20 watt or one of the dual port chargers or something from Apple, that will work just fine. And you plug that in um, to the bottom of the remote. And I, I seem to remember like a three or four hour charge time. Um, lots of times I just leave it in overnight. Um, and then I don't even have to think about it. But it just takes a few hours and it's good. Now, that's how we charge the battery of the remote, okay? When you purchase your Apple TV, though, it should the remote should be fairly charged. All right. We have already describe the initial setup to you for the most part. And so what we're going to assume today is that you now have your home screen, which is, again, many of these concepts, just like an iPhone or an iPad, right? You know, we know what the home screen is. That's where all the icons are, all your apps, all right? And the home screen is the main screen for your Apple TV, okay? It's not a live TV thing. It's, it's, a, it's a home screen with apps, okay? And the home screen is set up in a grid, just like your iPhone and iPad, meaning you have apps that go across from one column to the next, and then you can go down and back up, you know, to next row, previous row. And uh, I believe on the current now tvOS, we have six apps across um, before we have to go down to the next row. And you navigate these apps by pressing your directional pad on the click pad. You can press right, left, up, down. You can also by default swipe left, right, up and down. So you can either click the corners of the click pad circle or you can swipe on that click pad with one finger just like you would on the screen of your iPad or iPhone. It's up to you. Now, sometimes people will choose to disable the swiping feature under settings, and they might do that, especially if they've got some de dexterity challenges and so on, because what can happen is if you're not careful, you'll swipe quickly. And instead of swiping 
one app at a time or one row at a time, you'll, you know, three or four at a time. There's a couple ways to mitigate that. Um, the, the most important of which is muscle memory, to be honest with you, but there's a couple others too, but that's one of the biggest things that, you know, is helpful is just to practice swiping in less aggressive, smaller swipes. But again, you can disable it if you really don't like it. It is personal preference. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to give you some reasons why I like to leave the swipe enabled that you'll see later. Um, but it, as I say, it's personal preference. Okay. Um, but you don't even, when you're doing the navigating on the home screen, you can just click press, you know, repeatedly press the right arrow side or the left or the up or the down. And again, there are six, um, columns of apps across, and then you can go down to the next row, back up to the previous and so on. As with, um, now one, one thing you're not going to have that you do have on an iPhone or an iPad is multiple pages of apps. It's just a long, 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 the more you install, the longer it gets, right? It just adds more rows. We don't have multiple pages. We do have folders. We can create folders on the Apple TV home screen, but we don't have multiple pages. So you don't have to worry about switching from page one to page two, anything like that. All your apps are going to be on one quote unquote page. Uh, one home screen, but um, six across and then, you know, down to the next row. Now, even though there's not multiple pages, there is sort of the equivalent of the dock, but in this case, it's the top row, okay? And what makes this row unique is the fact that it offers app previews without opening the app, okay? Okay. They call it top shelf content. So if you have something in this top shelf or this top row and you swipe up or click up directly above the app in the top row, you're going to get recommendations or previews or something, okay? For example, in the top row by default is the music app, okay, for Apple Music. And if you swipe or click up while you're highlighting the music app, you will find music recommendations or recently played items or radio stations or whatever Apple features there. And you can just click to activate any of those things and get right to it. Sometimes you'll even get audio previews of things when you swipe up. Now, not every app that you might install uh, supports top shelf content, but I believe all of the Apple ones do. And they have six apps in that row for you already. And so you can, you know, get those app previews by simply swiping up or, or clicking up. And then when you're done with it, just swipe or click back down to get down to the previous, uh, you know, where you were again. And um, when you want to open an app, you simply click the center of the click pad. You do not double tap like you do with voiceover or tap like you do without voiceover on an iPhone or an iPad. There is no such thing here. You just click the center button. And the reason for that is because when we're on the screen of an iPhone or an iPad, we are directly touching the screen, right? So if we touch the phone icon, it brings focus to it with voiceover, and then we have to double tap on it to open it, or uh, you know, a sighted user that doesn't who doesn't use voiceover, they just tap on it and it opens. With this, we're not interacting directly with the screen, right? We're using a remote, a pointing device, essentially. So we can just click, and that doesn't change whether or not you use voiceover. It's the same command either way. So you navigate the home screen by clicking or swiping any of the four directions. And then when you come to something you want, you simply click the center. All right. And it's that simple. And then to get back out of that app, you press the back button, which we talked about where that is. It's the first button on the left in that series of buttons that that is directly below the click pad. All right. So that whether or not you use voiceover, that is basic navigation. Okay. Now, we are going to jump to voiceover a little bit and talk about some extra features that are given for voiceover users. And we're going to do that right now because we want to make sure we're all on the same page here. All right. So voiceover functions largely the same on an Apple TV as it does on an iPad or an iPhone, but quite honestly, even simpler, because as I said, you don't have different sets of commands typically. But there are some differences between the way the iPhone and iPad work and the, the TV OS works. And so there are a few extra features that are added to the TV version of voiceover to make things a little bit easier for you. For one thing, 
there are two different voiceover navigation modes, okay? And this is dependent upon what you want to do with your device at the time. There is navigation mode and there is exploration mode. You toggle between these modes with a voiceover gesture when voiceover is turned on. How do we turn voiceover on and off? We either use the Siri button and we speak it and say, turn voiceover on or whatever, or we use the, the back button, that left-hand top button in the series, which just below the click pad, three times, just like you would your um, top button or side button or whatever on your iPhone, right? Or iPad, three times, turn voiceover on, three times click, turn voiceover off. And if it's not, remember, if you've set up your device with voiceover, it automatically configures that accessibility shortcut to turn voiceover on and off with the triple click, just like it does on iPhone or iPad. If you didn't, if somebody else set it up for you, you didn't use voiceover during setup, same as on an iPhone or an iPad. You can go into settings, accessibility, and then go all the way down to accessibility shortcut, and you can set it to voiceover, okay? But now, once voiceover's on, we can toggle between navigation mode and exploration mode by doing a two-finger triple tap on the click pad. Again, it's a two-finger triple tap on the click pad. In other words, two fingers tap three times on the click pad. And that toggles you between navigation mode and exploration mode. And voiceover will announce which mode you're going into. Navigation mode is where you will spend the vast majority of your time because it allows you to have this simple navigation that is identical to what your sighted peers are doing. Swipe or click in any direction to navigate. Click the center button to open or activate or select. It works great for text entry. It works great for just about everything you're doing. But there are a few times when it might be beneficial to use exploration mode. And in exploration mode, it allows one item to stay selected while you navigate the rest of the screen. This is especially useful if you have to reread things like codes, where a screen will pop up and say, go to the following website and now enter the following activation code and things of that nature. And it's especially useful for situations like that. So again, to get into that exploration mode, you press the, uh, you don't press, you do a two finger triple tap on the click pad. And then when you're done, you do another two finger triple tap to get back to navigation mode. While you're in exploration mode, you can still press and swipe left, right, up and down. Um, and you can still click the center, but you also have additional voiceover options that we're gonna talk about right now. Now, VoiceOver on tvOS has a rotor, just like it does on iPad and iPhone, and really even Macintosh and Apple Watch. Um, to use the rotor, there are going to be different options depending on whether you're in navigation mode or um, uh, exploration mode. Okay, Navigation mode is essentially the same as what our sighted peers are doing. And... There is a difference when you're in navigation mode. The rotor is not going to be functional unless you deliberately call for it. OK, that is extremely different from iPhone and iPad, iPad and iPhone. There is always a rotor as long as voiceover is turned on, unless you happen to be in an app that's direct touch only. But typically there's always a rotor, you just don't realize it. And even your sighted peers don't realize it when voiceover's on because they don't see the rotor until they do a two finger rotation. And then it brings up a virtual knob that shows them that the rotor's there. But the rotor is always active, right? Any place that you are on an iPhone or an iPad, if you swipe up or down with one finger, you're changing the rotor uh, by whatever the setting is. So if you're set to characters, you swipe up or down, you're gonna move by character. If you happen to land on a uh, value adjuster, like you know, select a state or uh, change the volume or a scrub bar in a media playback scenario, 
then your rotor automatically turns to adjust value. But you swipe up or down with one finger, it's adjusting that by the rotor setting, okay? The same thing cannot be said for navigation mode on Apple TV. When you're on Apple TV and you swipe up and down, you are not affecting the rotor. You are moving up and down just as your sighted peers would without voiceover, okay? Very big difference. No rotor is active by default in navigation mode on Apple TV. You press the up arrow, the down arrow, swipe up or down. You're not affecting the rotor. You're literally moving up and down, okay? But if you decide you need the rotor in navigation mode, you simply place two fingers on the track click pad and you rotate them left or right, just like you would iPhone or iPad. And it gives you rotor access for approximately five seconds. If you keep turning the rotor, it, it stays longer. But when you stop using it, then it, it goes away after about five seconds. So why would you even use the rotor in navigation mode? Well, most times you wouldn't. But there are a few controls in tvOS that can only be controlled if they're in the rotor. And maybe some people like them. OK, and these are things that we will talk about later. Um, and then there are some that you can add to the rotor, like speaking rate. Some people like to be able to control their speaking rate on the fly. I don't. I'd, I'd rather have it out of the rotor and just set it to what I want and forget it. But everybody's different, right? Personal preference. So there are a couple cases where like that, where you might want to use the rotor in navigation mode. It's mostly about voiceover, like speaking rate, volume, uh, hints, feedback sounds, those kinds of things. Okay. That's mostly what you'll see in the rotor in navigation mode. And again, you simply rotate two fingers to activate the rotor. And while it's active, then swiping up and down will indeed affect the rotor or clicking up and down. So if you decide, oh, I want to change the speaking rate, I'm in navigation mode, you're going to rotate two fingers on that click pad until you hear speaking rate and then immediately swipe or click up and down. And instead of moving you up and down, it is actually going to affect the rotor. And again, when you're done, just press the left or right side of the click pad or just wait five seconds. And the, maybe it's even three seconds now that I think about it. And the rotor will go away. It'll just disappear and you'll be back to what you are normally used to. OK, that's it. There are no special things for voiceover in navigation mode because they're not needed. You just navigate and, and, and click. And it's as simple as that. There's one voiceover command that also works in navigation mode. And that is if you press and hold the play pause button. Remember that row of buttons? Second on the left in, in the series of buttons there, just below the back button. If you press and hold that play pause button for a couple seconds, it will read whatever is on the screen. It will repeat whatever's on the screen. So if you missed something and you just wanted to read the whole screen again, you just press and hold the play pause button for, for a second or so, and it'll read it again. Okay, that's the only other voiceover specific command for navigation mode at this point. Now, exploration mode is a whole different ballgame. When you do that two finger triple tap, this is not how I would recommend navigating most of the time. But as I said, it's good for certain scenarios. And in exploration mode, the rotor is always active, just like on your iPhone and iPad. So now when you swipe or click up and down, you are always affecting the rotor. And if you want to change the rotor setting, you still rotate two fingers. In exploration mode, you can have a lot more stuff in the rotor. And you can customize this under your voiceover settings. You can have characters, words, headings, lists, um, Braille. Uh, there's something about Braille auto advance. There's a whole bunch. I forget. I looked last night. Uh, to prepare for this class today. And I, I forget if there were like 18 or 20 different things you could have in the rotor. And um, so you can customize them. And, you know, uh, this is a much more extensive rotor when you're in exploration mode. The other thing that works in exploration mode is the two finger tap on the click pad to silence voiceover speech and resume speech. That will not work in navigation mode, but it will work in um, exploration mode. The other thing that works in exploration mode is the two fingers swipe up or the two fingers swipe down to read the entire screen or to read 
continuously from where you are. Those commands work on the exploration mode specifically just like they do on iPhone and iPad. So you have some extra commands that you might, gestures that you might actually already be used to. And really they're not needed most of the time on Apple TV, but if you do need them, you can go to exploration mode to put them to use. Um, you still can press the play pause button and hold it down for a second while you're in exploration mode and it will read um, the, the whole screen for you again as well. Now, one of the situations where I like to use exploration mode is what I described to you a few minutes ago when you're signing into certain apps that require you to maybe go to a website on a nearby phone and then enter an activation code. It's very rare that I have to do that. But sometimes if you do, certain apps, just the way they're coded, are better at reading that automatically than others. Some, and I don't see this much anymore, but it used to be a bigger issue, some apps would not separate the characters. So they'd say, enter the following activation code when prompted. And certain apps would do really well. And they'd say, C, W, J, R, 1, 5, 9. You know, it was real easy. Other apps would be like, enter the following activation code when prompted. Squash you. It's like, what in the world is that? You know, and it's just, it was reading all the letters together. So what I would then do is I'd switch to exploration mode. I had characters in the rotor. And so when I'd switch to exploration mode, I could set the rotor to characters. I could left and right navigate until I land on the code. And then I could swipe down with one finger to read it letter by letter. And then when I was done with that, I'd put it back in navigation mode. So that's an example of a situation where you might use exploration mode. Again, I don't think it's necessary probably 99% of the time on tvOS, but it is nice praise God, that they have it in there for those few times when you do or might need it. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is that within navigation mode, okay, the, the sort of normal mode, the navigation mode, we also have two different navigation styles that we can choose under our voiceover settings. One is called direct touch and one is called follow focus, all right? Now, for most people, I recommend direct touch. And you're going to see why later, okay? Because it's going to give some freedoms that you won't have if you're in follow focus mode. But if you have dexterity challenges with your hands and you are struggling, you might consider using follow focus mode. Because what this does is it sort of makes the, um, the situation more like your iPhone or iPad where there's an actual voiceover cursor. And so it's not exploration mode. It's still navigation mode, but you'll have this sort of only, I can only swipe one item at a time and then it'll reach the boundary instead of where in direct touch mode, I could, you know, choose to swipe three, four, five items at one time. And so again, if you've got dexterity challenges, it might be worth going into the settings and turning the follow focus mode on instead of the direct touch mode. Now, you might say, well, why would you ever need to swipe four or five items at a time? Well, you're going to see that shortly where there are benefits to that. And spoiler alert, the short answer is long lists. When you want to navigate long lists, you don't really want to have to be going item by item by item or even the keyboard for text entry. So I think that it's worth uh, understanding. But, you know, what we just talked about, I debated whether to bring it up at the beginning because I, I could easily make the case that that's a bit more advanced. We're going to overwhelm people. But I wanted you to know that the option is there because I don't want you to start using this and feel like it's just going to be a no-go because you can't control the remote properly or you don't understand why things are acting the way they are. So if you don't remember everything I've just shared or if it seems too overwhelming, which I apologize if that's the case, but if it does, just ignore it. And then go back and listen later on the podcast again when you need it. But it at least gives you an idea of there are different, a couple different navigation modes and then a couple different navigation styles so that if you ever need to make that change, at least if nothing else, you remember, you'll think to yourself, well, I remember he said if I had issues of controlling it, I could change something. Now, what was that? You know, and it would jog your memory uh, a little bit there. So that is the uh, sort of basic voiceover introduction. And we are so big here at TTJ on the idea that if you learn the fundamentals, then you could really 
do anything you want to do. And you've just learned the fundamentals and then some, okay? The most basic fundamental is you simply swipe or click and then, you know, in any direction that you want to move and then click the center button to activate. And it really, really is that simple. Now, there's one other area of sort of fundamental navigation type stuff that we need to talk about, and that is text entry. And again, I debated this and I said, do we do text entry right away? Because it's not as fun as talking about, you know, watching movies and shows. The problem is there may be some apps where you need text entry to get in. And you may not feel like you're ready to use your iPhone as a continuity keyboard or pair a Bluetooth keyboard or anything yet. You've got to at least have those basics, right? And so as I was looking to God to lead me to which way to do this, this is what I believe is the way he would have us do it. And I think you're going to be blessed because of it, and you'll be happy that we did cover it. So we're going to talk about text entry. And I'm going to probably demonstrate it for you. But I will talk first about how it works. When you get a keyboard on screen where you need to enter text, like signing into an app, what's going to happen is you will have a long row of alphabetical letters. It's not a QWERTY keyboard. That's the first thing you need to understand. It's right across the space bar, like the space is on the left. And then you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right across all the way. And mostly it's it's all in one row, all 26 letters. You don't have to go down. You don't have to do any of that stuff. And then at the very right past the Z, you'll find that you have your uh, delete. And you can repeatedly press the delete button to actually remove character by character. But you can also press and hold the delete button to clear everything you've entered into your um, edit field. And if you'll bear with me just a second, you're getting ready for work, cuz. Okay. Love you. Love you. Have a good day at work. Uh -huh. If you need anything, let us know. We might drop off dinner for you then, too, because Nana's making that ham pot pie. Okay. Love you. Well, I can stop and pick it up. If she has it ready, you can text her and see. I'll leave now. Okay. All right. Voice over on. Okay. TV. Love you. Okay. My son's just getting ready for work, but I'm going to demonstrate this. So again, you have all of your letters are in one row. And this is something that might seem weird to you at first, but it's so different than anything else. If you use Android TV or anything, I don't know about Fire TV, but anytime I've ever used another one, I find it more complicated than this because you don't have to worry about how many rows up or down you go. The whole alphabet's just there. Um, and as I said, to the left of the A is the space bar and to the right of the Z is your delete. And really your numbers are below that. And there are some other things that we can do then. And I'll show you that in a moment. But I just, I want to point out, this is one of those times. Remember I said to you, I don't like to disable the swiping on the click pad. I like to leave it for touch and, or uh, rather click and swipe. And I told you that you'd very quickly see the benefit of that. This is one of those cases, because if I need to spell a word, like what I'm going to demonstrate for you in a moment, I'll put my iPad by our TV speaker soundbar, and you should be able to hear it just fine. And you will see, I'll have it, I'll spell like Netflix or something, we'll, you know, search for something. And you'll see that rather than having to click each letter, A, B, C, D, E, all the way to the end, I'll take a, my, my thumb and I'll do a really big swipe maybe two or three times and it'll put me close to the end and then I can click left or right for the precision to get one letter at a time so I'm on the correct letter. It is so much easier than if I had to only do one or the other, only swiping or only clicking. So we're going to come up to the TV here and find out what this sounds like when we do it. And I need just a moment to set that up. All right. And I got a heater on that's going to make me a little bit warm if I'm sitting here. So we might turn that off. Hey, Google, 
Turn off the living room heater. Okay. All right, so I'm by my television. This should be good enough here. Music, row one, column two, no top shelf cost TV, row one, column one, top shelf content available. Now, as you can imagine, I was clicking and uh, using the, you know, the remote. And if I wanted to open any of those things, I simply click on it. So let's open the TV app. Music, TV, row one, column now one. Now I'll just click the center button. Available. TV, row one, Nicole. Okay. Now, the, show sidebar. The, the TV app is set up with a sidebar. And what that means is just like an iPad sidebar or a Mac sidebar, along the left side are my category icons. And I click on whichever one I want. So we're going to come back to that. That wasn't my intent right now, but I'm going to uh, use that sidebar to get to the search field so I can search for something. So what I've got to do is press the left arrow to get to the, or swipe left, but I'm going to click left to get to the sidebar. Killers of the flower up next. Next. Press selected home button two of seven. So it said selected home two of seven. To navigate through the items on that sidebar, I press up and down to get to three of seven, four of seven. Okay, I need to go up to one of seven, which is the search field, search category. Search button, one of seven. And now I click the center of the track pad, click pad, so it opens search. Matthew, key, keyboard, A, alpha. I'm on the keyboard. Now, to navigate this keyboard, again, we're going to press the left or the right arrows. We move character at a time. B, C, D. Okay, love you. See you Delta, soon. E. F, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, space. All right. And of course, the one on the left there is the space. So um, you heard each letter. I moved through A, B, C, D, and I did that one character at a time. Now, I want to search for a movie or a show. So I'm going to search for the new movie called Wonka. One of my favorite movies as a kid was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and we saw Wonka in theaters recently. I want to see if it's ready to watch on Apple TV yet. So I could dictate by holding down the side button right now, but I'm not going to show you that. I want to show you how to enter it manually. Now, here's the question. Wonka, as we all know, starts with W. Do I really want to press this character one at a time, right-click arrow by, like, you know? A, B, C, D, E. And the answer is no, I do not want to do that. I want to swipe rapidly to get close to the W, and then I'll click to get more precise. So let's try it. D G J F O S. Now we'll Sierra. now we'll click. W. And then to press the to enter the W, I just press the center. W keyboard 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 keyboard. Now if I want to delete that, I can go to the right and I can delete. Delete. Hold okay. Select. And it says hold select to clear. So you can you can press and hold that um, delete to, to actually clear out everything that's there. Down below. Recently searched beyond the block. That's my jam. Planet Earth keyboard. Hey. Okay. So down oh. below are going to be different things depending on what keyboard you're in. In this case, select it has recent search searches. Phone. Now, oh. in some oh. keyboards, you're going to have numbers, you're going to have special characters. And you might have two or three different rows of things on your keyboard. You might have your alphabet. And then if you go down to the next row, you might have your numbers and your common symbols to the right of the numbers, like one through nine and zero. And then you might have like dash or, you know, comma. You might have, if it's an email address field, like a, an at symbol and a dot com automatically. So you don't even have to type the period C-O-M. You know, there's all different kinds of keyboards that can be displayed. And usually directly below or above all of these is going to be a list of choices. It'll say like uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols. And you can simply left and right through each of those until you find the one you want and then click on it. Now, there is a shortcut, especially for cases where you might be entering case-sensitive stuff. If you quickly press the play 
pause button one time while you're on a keyboard, it will toggle you between upper and lower case. This is really, really useful when you're entering passwords. So I don't have to go down and find that row where it's upper or lower and then select it. I don't have to do all of that. Again, lots of times on like Android TV devices and stuff, you have to do that and it becomes very complicated. You can forget where you are even in entering the password. All I have to do here is press the play button. It toggles me to uppercase. Press the play button. It toggles me to lowercase. And sometimes if I press it repeatedly, it'll even take me to the special symbols or the numbers. So it makes it easier to jump between keyboards by clicking that play pause button whenever you want to change keyboards. I will also tell you that when you are entering anything you want in a text field, you can always dictate. And again, to do that, we simply press and hold the side button, the, the Siri button. Um, when you're dictating email addresses and passwords, you can spell everything out. So if my email address is, um, you know, cliff at uh, iCloud, whatever, you know, I would say, I'd hold down the side button and I'd say K L I P. H at I C L like I would I would actually read it like that. And as it's inserting voiceover is going to read it back to you on the TV. OK, so that's um, useful, especially in passwords. And if you need to say capital or cap, you can just say that. I find that it's better to say capital, but really either one should work. So I say capital M, you know, and then if I don't say capital, it, it inserts a lowercase one. OK, and um so that's a way you can dictate your passwords and, and usernames once everything's set up. The other nice thing with entering usernames is that Apple TV will save the email addresses that you enter. So if you have the same two or three email addresses and usernames that you use for most or all of your streaming services, instead of having to enter those each time, you can select them from a list. So you, when you get an email address prompt, you'll see like... Uh, recently used or something and then at the bottom of that list as you keep going down it'll say add new email and so then you can enter a new one or enter new whatever it says so it, it's pretty clear and so then you can enter another one okay so that's text entry in a nutshell i mean it really is simple uh just move across in most cases some cases you have to go down to find something else numbers or whatever and we be sure that you uh remember that play pause button Press that to toggle between uppercase and lowercase and, and what have you. Um, there are other ways to enter text, and we're going to get into those a little bit later. But there are. There's the continuity keyboard, which means anytime you open up an edit field on the Apple TV, it's going to bring up a notification on your other Apple devices that are signed into the same Apple ID. And it's going to say, uh, Apple TV keyboard, enter text to type. And so what will happen is you can double tap on that notification on your iPhone or your iPad, and it'll bring up an on-screen keyboard on your phone or your iPad. And when you type on it, it will insert those characters on the TV. When is that the most useful? It's most useful for passwords because guess what you get? You get iCloud keychain. So on your password keyboard on the screen of your iPhone is going to be the option to autofill passwords, just like it always is. And if you've taken any of our other classes, you already know how good autofill with uh, keychain is. And so it'll autofill those on the Apple TV for you. And you don't even have to enter the passwords. It is super cool. Um, you can also use a Bluetooth keyboard to control and enter text on the Apple TV. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. I don't want to get into that yet. But we can do that. You can use the um, uh, Bluetooth keyboard if you choose. Or a Braille display. So you have a lot of options. A lot of ways to do things here. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to uh, jump to is I want to talk about Control Center before we start getting into the, the fun apps and stuff. Okay. Because Control Center, like on your iPhone or iPad or Mac, is going to give you access to the common controls that you might need. And at any given time, you have three basic tabs in the control center, but sometimes you'll have more depending on what's going on. But most people are going to have three. Sometimes maybe you'll only have two if you haven't set up um, the Apple Home app. 
if you're using an Apple TV, though, I highly recommend that you set up the Apple Home app on your iPhone or iPad because it's going to allow you to add the Apple TV to your home. It's going to allow you to assign it to a room. And that's really useful when you have multiple Apple TVs. It's going to allow you to have multiple users on the Apple TV so that each person can have his or her own watching profiles and game center profiles and all this. So it's really good to to set up HomeKit if you've not already done so. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. So if your HomeKit is set up, okay, you're going to have three basic tabs in the control center at all time times. You're going to have the users tab, which is where your user profiles are. You can quickly, quickly switch users. You're going to have the control center tab, and you're going to have the home tab, which will have like your home kit cameras and scenes and different things like that. You may have even more stuff in the control center because if you have AirPods in your ears, for example, if you're wearing any of the AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, any of those, um, you're going to have controls for things like spatial audio, things like sharing with a second set of AirPods, uh, things like noise cancellation. You can have all these options for your AirPods. If you happen to have your iPhone or your iPad on a FaceTime call, you're going to have FaceTime and continuity camera controls in the control center. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can have in control center, but at the very least at any given time, you'll have two or maybe three. These are the top row of control center tabs. So you go to the top and then you click left or right to move between them. And when you find the one you want, you then click down, okay? The thing about the control center, though, that you have to be aware of is that when you click down and you start moving left or right, you can easily move to the next tab. It doesn't restrict you just to one tab. So it's not like a traditional tab setup where, like, you know, once I select the general tab, I have to go back to the list of tabs to pick a different one. No, it will switch you. So if you're not careful, you just need to get used to this. Once you understand what's going on, it will not be confusing. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you so that you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, how, again, we told you before, but how do we access the control center? We press and hold the TV button. So again, I'm going to walk up to my television here. I have my remote and I'm going to um, get up here. Uh, my screensaver. Let me let me just adjust my iPad here. Early moments. Okay. Baby Carson, two thousand seven. My screensaver's on. It's displaying photos. Early moments with Baby Carson, two thousand seven. I'm gonna press the back button to get out of the screensaver and back to the home screen. TV row one column one alert Matthew to change users hold and Matthew to change users hold TV right. period. Right, to change users, hold TV. So we're going to hold TV so we can get into the control center anyway. Control center button. I'm on this row of three. Listen, if I go to the left. Home get button. Volbrecht family ever at home. And that's it. Go to the right. Control center button. And. User button. And that's it. So let's suppose that I want to work with control center. I'm going to go to the left and then go down. Control center button. Now I'm going to go down. Power off. What power off? One of five. Go to the right. Selected Wi Fi home. And there's my Wi Fi network. Two okay. Two to, the, of five. to the right. Kylie, two of five. Matthew, one of five. Oh, what happened? Why did I get out of control center items and into usernames? Because there was nothing more in control center to the right and it automatically took me to the next thing. That's what I was describing to you. So that happens, be careful so you don't get confused. Now I can go back up to the top to go back to control center, but if I just go to the left past the users, it should take me back to control center. So let's just do that. Power off, one of five. Now let's go down. Off, one of five. Let's go down Selected this time. audio, four of five. Sleep timer, five of five. Let's go down. Restrictions, accessibility, game controllers, Volbrecht Vol family ever at home. Okara camera hub G front door doorbell. Power off audio game control accessibility restrictions search. Kylie, and then it moves me five. to the users. So you see how that works. When you're through one tab, it automatically moves you to the next tab. And you can just keep going right or left and go through everything that way. 
and and then you'll have to go down. So you you'll get a muscle memory feel for this and you'll know. But you saw all the different things that I have in control center. I have a power off option, which turns everything off. That's not the only way I can do it, but it is certainly one way. Uh, the Wi-Fi, I had game controllers. I have the search option so I can quickly get to a universal search. Um, what else did it say? Uh, restrictions, accessibility, and of course, audio. Audio allows me to choose different speakers so I can play this throughout the home. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but remember that that is in Control Center. And again, um, we have the users, the list of users, so I could, you know, quickly just switch to another person. And that's really important when we start getting into the next section, when we talk about the Apple TV app and, you know, profiles and so on. That's how you switch. And you have to add these users first by using the home app uh, or or at least using their devices. So like it'll, uh, if you're in a family share group, you know, it, it'll suggest that you add, you know, your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter, whoever they, you know, and when you add them, it'll, it'll ask you if you want to use their phone and they can just hold their phone near the Apple TV and it'll set it up or you can enter a code. You know, there are different ways to add that, but it makes it super convenient then because you just switch users. So, it, you know, if my daughter is watching something that she wants to watch, that the whole family isn't necessarily interested in, she can simply press and hold the TV button and then she can choose her, go to the, you know, the profiles and choose her name, click on it. And now it's, it's using her account, her Apple ID, everything. Okay. So it's really, really easy. It's designed to be a multi-user experience. All right. So that is control center. And that brings us to a place where I'm going to give you a two or three minute break. Get a drink, get a snack, stretch your legs, whatever it is you want to do, because when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the apps on here now, in particular, the TV app today. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So don't go away. All right. But take a minute or two and um, we will come right back. I know some of you still have a lot of questions. We have Q&A time at the end, of course, anyway. But, you know, you may have questions that might be, you know, next week material, too. I know people are wondering about audio descriptions. We're going to get there. Um, there's some, you know, ways to control playback uh, things. That we'll, we'll cover all that. All right, we're not there yet. Um, but um, the Apple TV is based on apps, right? And we've already talked on Monday and even a little bit today about TV providers, cable and satellite streaming only, streaming on demand like Peacock and Netflix, uh, TV everywhere, all these different ways of getting content onto your Apple TV. And when you install them, they put an app on the home screen and you just click on that app to open it. And then you navigate that app based on how it's set up. There's a few different ways apps are set up on the Apple TV. We're going to discuss them in a moment. And uh, basically, that's it. It's that simple. Um, there are some other things that you can do. For example, if you have an app that's running, you can get to the app switcher, just like you have an app switcher on your iPhone or iPad, by double-clicking the TV button. Remember that series of buttons below the circle? It's the right-hand top button in that series. Double click it. That's the same button you press and hold to get to control center, by the way. You double click that. It brings up the app switcher. You move left and right through the apps in the app switcher. You click on an app to open it or you swipe up on the app to close it. Very simple. And because you're in navigation mode, direct touch, you don't even have to use like the rotor and say like actions, close app or anything. You would in exploration mode. Uh, although they have a shortcut there, you can three finger swipe up to close it. But in navigation mode, you don't even have to do that. You just swipe up with one finger, just like your sighted counterparts would do it. Same thing. Okay. It's real simple. 
So um, App Switcher is useful if you want to quickly get back to another app that's already been recently used, or if you need to force quit an app that's misbehaving. Now, just like with an iPhone or an iPad, there is absolutely no need to do that on a regular basis. You do not need to go into your app switcher and close out all your running apps, but it is a useful way to quickly jump back to an app you recently used or to quit an app that is not performing properly. The other thing you can do with your home screen apps is you can long press. And to long press on Apple TV, you just click and hold the center. It's that simple. And the purpose of long pressing an app on the home screen, it's going to give you choices like deleting the app, moving the app, um, things of that nature. So, in, for example, if I – now, I don't have my phone, my iPad up near the TV right now, but I'll just tell you what it says, and you have to take my word for it, okay? Uh, I, I'm on Netflix. If I click and hold on Netflix, this is what I get. Edit home screen. Re, uh, uh, sorry. Edit home screen. Move to and delete app. And delete will also allow you to offload for those who know what that means. Okay. But move uh, to is there because I have a couple of folders already. And I think it would allow me to create a new folder that way as well. And so instead of having to like drag it and then say add to folder or whatever, this is how you do it. You just choose move to. And then edit home screen does allow me to swipe and click on the trackpad or click pad rather to actually move my app if I want to put it in a different position. Okay. Just like on my iPhone or iPad, I don't have many folders, but I do have, um, you know, sort of a setup that I like. I do have an Apple Arcade folder. And I have, you know, all the Apple Arcade games contained in there. Um, so there, you know, some stuff like that. But uh, so that's click and hold. That's long press. Okay. Just like iPhone and iPad. All right. So the only other thing I want to talk about before we get into the TV app is I want to talk about two very common app layouts. One is the sidebar and one is the tab view. Okay. If you are an iPad user, or a Mac user, you already know what a sidebar is like. And I showed it to you a little bit a moment ago in the TV app, which we're going to talk about. A sidebar has a long vertical bar along the left-hand side that has all of your categories. Now, some apps require you to click on the category you want to choose it. The TV app, the Apple TV app, is a perfect example of that. And you heard that. I was in the Home tab. It said Home, two of seven. I moved over to the left, and now I could navigate my sidebar by going up and down. I needed to go up to the search category. But once I got up to it, I had to click the center to actually select search. If I didn't do that, if I had just moved back to the right or down, it would have just kept going. Down would have taken me back you know, to other categories in the sidebar, but going to the right would have taken me into whatever category was selected, which still was home because I hadn't clicked on search yet. When I wanted search, I actually had to click on it. So there are certain sidebars that require you to click on the category you want before it is, is activated. And the Apple TV app is a perfect example of that. There are other sidebar apps and since we have some Comcast customers in here, the Xfinity Stream app is a perfect example of this, where you don't have to click on the category to activate it. Simply moving to that category on the sidebar automatically selects it. And the Xfinity Stream app works that way. So in the Xfinity Stream app, your sidebar has like home, live TV, my library, and browse, I think. And maybe there's another one, but I think that's it. Maybe settings or something. But in that one, if you want to go to live TV, you just go to the left to the sidebar, move up or down until you get to live TV, and then just move right. You don't have to click the center first. I suppose you can, but I don't even, you wouldn't need to because it automatically selects live TV. So it's it just depends on the app. You will know because voiceover will be pretty clear about what's happening. If it says selected or if it starts to read content from that whatever it is, then you'll know that's already been selected, you know, and if not, you just click the center. So those are sidebar apps. The other kind of app we can have on the Apple TV is a tabbed app. Now, a tabbed app, as its name suggests, is going to have things separated into tabs. You're familiar with that from the iPhone and the iPad as well. But unlike the iPhone and the iPad, the tabs are across the top instead of across the bottom. 
So you have to go up as high as you can to get to the list of tabs. And again, like with your sidebar, some apps require you to click the center to select the tab first, and others do not. You have to play a little bit to see which one you're using. But you move through the tabs with the left and right. Okay, and then you'd go back down to get whatever's in the tab. And an easy way to play with that is using the App Store on the Apple TV because that's set up in tabs. You have tabs across the top for, um, what does it have? Discover, Search. Um, there's six different tabs, I think, in the App Store on Apple TV. So that is a tabbed app. There may be some other variants, but most apps you're going to find are, are broken down into that basic setup. And understanding that, will be very helpful. It, it took me a while because nobody really explained that to me. And I started seeing these sidebar apps, which they're the newer way of doing it. And the things are, I mean, it's really nice once you get used to that, but I, I didn't understand why I'd go to the left and I'd see things I hadn't seen across the top. And I was, you know, just confused. But once you know that, so I think you're, if I recall, I mean, I could open them up and look, but if I recall, your Max app is a sidebar app. Disney Plus has a sidebar. Peacock has a sidebar, I think. Uh, Paramount Plus, I can't remember now. I think it might be a sidebar app. Most of these apps do. But most of them are sidebar apps nowadays. There's some that are not. And, and another one I think that doesn't is the music app. I think that's a tabbed app, too. Um, all right, so this gives you some idea of what you're going to be experiencing when you get into these apps. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Apple TV app. Um, I mentioned to you several times now, actually, that there are you know multiple ways of getting content onto our Apple TV. And the TV app or the Apple TV app, which, by the way, is also available on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac, um, this is a powerful way to bring everything together from most of your other apps, most being the operative word, because there are a few apps that don't support this, but most do. Okay. The benefits of this are just huge. All right. So let's talk about what the TV app is. The TV app is Apple's sort of hub for all your TV. Now, first and foremost, the Apple TV app is the home of yet another streaming service, which we have not yet talked about. And in case you couldn't guess, it's Apple TV Plus. Apple TV Plus lives in the TV app, obviously. Okay. So if you subscribe to Apple TV Plus, you're going to get all your Apple TV Plus content in the TV app. But even if you don't subscribe to Apple TV Plus, there's a lot you're going to be able to do with the TV app. All right. It doesn't require an Apple TV Plus subscription to use the app. There's a lot more that can be done in the app. But I did want to stress that, that if you want to use Apple TV Plus, you'll use the Apple TV app. There's a lot of really great content on Apple TV Plus, award-winning content, very, very high quality stuff. And it's a great service. So you can certainly subscribe to Apple TV Plus. And uh, maybe you already are, you know, and, and you could with a bundle, Apple One bundle or a trial or something, but you can use the Apple TV app to access it. And in the sidebar, you will find a category for Apple TV Plus. You can also subscribe in the Apple TV app to the MLS season pass. So if you want to watch soccer, um, Apple TV app is the home of that and you can subscribe directly in that app. There are also... Uh, some other channels that you can subscribe to directly in the Apple TV app. Now, these include things like Stars, Paramount Plus with Showtime, MGM Plus, Cinemax, um, Tastemade, uh, Hallmark Movies Now. There are probably 32 or 34, something like that, different channels that support subscribing directly in the Apple TV app. Now, the benefit of subscribing directly in the Apple TV app is that you don't need to download a separate app to use them, and you don't need a separate login to use them. 
you simply use your Apple ID and you just use the TV app and all of the content is there. The billing happens directly through Apple and it's very, very convenient. But in most cases, it's not the only way. And some of the promotions that companies offer will require you to subscribe directly through the app or website rather than through the TV app. For example, whenever you see like um, a service like, you know, Paramount Plus or something might say, uh, you know, your... Um, going to be able to get this for 99 cents a month for the first three months or something that typically has to be done directly through their app. Okay. Or if you get your streaming service as a part of another, uh, as a, as a perk, you know, of something else, like for example, we are Walmart plus members and because we're Walmart plus members, we get Paramount plus not the, with not the showtime like premium or whatever they call it, but we get the Paramount plus essentials plan which is all that we really want with Paramount Plus. So instead of, I can't use the, the channel in the TV app, I, I have to use the app, okay? I have to install Paramount Plus and sign in, okay? Now, the TV app will still be used to keep track of what I watch on Paramount Plus, even though I'm watching it in the Paramount Plus app. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But it does mean I have to use the, the separate app, and that's fine. Um. Some apps do not have channels in the Apple TV app, and then you have to use their app. Like, for example, the Max app, formerly HBO Max. They don't offer an Apple TV channel, so they require you to use their own app. But just because you have to use their own app doesn't mean you can't use the TV app for some features, and I'll explain that in a moment. And also, I'll point out that even though Max is not an Apple TV channel. It, it has to be its own app. It does support Apple billing, okay, just like Peacock does. So you can still subscribe through Apple or on the website. This is where customers can get a little bit confused because they don't know which way is the best. And, you know, for example, my, uh, my parents were recently looking and saying, you know, we want to reduce some of the stuff that we have. And they were subscribed to Paramount Plus with Showtime through the Apple TV app as an Apple TV channel. It was very convenient for them. They didn't need a separate app, but they were paying $11.99 for that, and they don't really watch Showtime. All they wanted was the Paramount Plus part of it. And I said to them, I said, hey, do you care if there's a few commercials? They said, no, we don't mind if there's a few commercials now. I said, well, then here's what you do. Cancel your Apple TV channel subscription to Paramount Plus with Showtime, Download the Paramount Plus app and create an account and just subscribe to the Essentials plan. That's going to be only like $6 a month instead of 12 And so, you know, that'll give you what you want. So th this is where, you know, it, this is where this can be a bit overwhelming for people. But we take it one step at a time. And, you know, TTJ is just a phone call away. You, you know, but you, you get to know this and you get to understand it, right? So the TV app, though, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit trail right now. The, the TV app uh, has these channels that you can subscribe to. And of course, not the least of which is um, Apple TV Plus and MLS Season Pass. But the Apple TV app is so, so much more than that. My favorite thing about the Apple TV app is the home tab, or not tab, but home category in the sidebar. Because the home category is all about keeping track of what you watch across all or most of your various streaming apps and services, and then making it available to you on all your devices. It is synced with iCloud, so you can start on one device, continue on another, and always have everything front and center. It's also about using that content then to make recommendations of other things that you might like to watch. If you are a sports fan, it will also give you real-time sports scores in the home category. And it'll even give you access to live news. So there's a lot of stuff in this home tab. You navigate to the, I apologize, I still am saying tab, but it's, you know what I mean, it's the sidebar category. So if you navigate to home, you're going to then be able to swipe or click up and down through all these different things in the home category. 
And the first row of things is like recommended Apple TV plus content that they're featuring right up there. But then if you go down, you get to something called up next. Now up next is my favorite thing, honestly, about the Apple TV. Because what happens is regardless of what app I am using to watch something, it shows up in up next. If I'm watching a series, like I really, you know, my family and I, you'll see when I show you our up next uh, section here in a moment, but our family, we really like the sitcoms. Uh, that's mostly what we like to watch are the sitcoms, the classic shows. And then we also watch like some um, cooking and food and, and home design and documentary type shows. And then, you know, some other movies and family programming and stuff like that. But no matter what it is, it's going to be here in the up next. Now, unfortunately, Netflix is a big, big exception to this. And that's because they don't share the data that's necessary for Apple to do this for whatever reason. But I'm going to let you hear uh, my up next category a little bit. TV, row one, column one, alert, Matthew, to change users, hold. And remember I said- Matthew, you, to change users, hold, hold, TV, period. Okay. Remember I said you have different, multiple users, multiple profiles. So each person has his or her own up next section too. So let's go into TV. TV, row one. See, I should- Press be... back or navigate back to show sidebar. Okay. Selected, home, button, two or seven. Go to the right. Killers of the Flower Moon. There's that. 10 Oscar registered nomination. Featured row. Go down. Up next. Next. Middle dot S21. E4. Continue. Middle dot S1. E21. Full house. Continue S1. E21. One of 25. So there's full house. We were watching full house just a little bit ago. Let's go to the right. Next. Middle dot S21. E4. Island life. Next S21, E4, Max, 2 of 25. That's a show called Island Life. It's about um, people looking for uh, a home on different islands. It's like an HGTV thing. And you'll notice it said Max. That's where I watch that in the Max app. Next, middle dot S6, E24, The King of Queens. Next S6, E24, Peacock, 3 of 25. And there's Peacock for King of Queens. And it says 3 of 25. But I should point out that if I if I swipe right and I get through 25, there's actually 50 or maybe even 100 it can store in this. And so it just adds to it as you keep going to the right. It'll increase that number. Now, you're already seeing how this works. If you're in the middle of an episode, it'll say continue. If you've reached the end of the episode, it'll say next because it will show you the next episode. If it's a movie... It'll just tell you like how long is remaining. And if you're watching a series that is still in progress, like a current show, when there's a new episode available, that new episode will also show up in your up next section and it'll go right to the head of the line so you can start watching it. I cannot explain to you or stress to you how awesome this is and how powerful it is. As I said, it's it's no exaggeration to say that this is my absolute favorite feature of the Apple TV and the whole Apple system because it works across not just Apple TV, but also iPad, iPhone, and Mac. And so this is, I mean, it, it's just awesome because no matter what I'm watching, I don't have to say, okay... Uh, what app do I use to watch Full House? I got to find that app. And then, no, all I got to do is go to the TV app, go to my up next list. And I pick the next one in the queue and it automatically opens the correct app and it instantly starts playing. Uh, I mean, some apps, maybe I have to select my profile or something first because apps also can have their own profiles too. But you get the idea. Uh, pretty much immediately I'm, I'm watching my show or movie. And, and the other part that's good about this is I don't have to think about Oh, it's Thursday. What shows do I watch on Thursday? What what comes on? I want to make sure I don't miss that or I have to check my DVR or whatever. No, this will just display it. You just watch it. If you are a Comcast customer, the Xfinity Stream app supports this feature as well. And so does the DirecTV app. 
So does the Spectrum app, I believe. Um, hesitating on that one because I don't actually use Spectrum, but I think so. Um, so does the, oh, let's see, Sling TV app. All of these services except Netflix, like Hulu, Disney Plus, Peacock, Max, Paramount Plus, uh, Prime Video, um, Amazon Freebie, uh, lots and lots of these popular streaming services support the Up Next feature of the TV app. They call it deep linking uh, with the TV app. And I will say that with live TV, like Xfinity Stream, for example, it's not going to do it with live TV, okay? Because imagine how convoluted that could get. But it does it with the on-demand content. So if you're using Xfinity Stream to watch a live channel um, and you say, well, why didn't that show up in my up next? Well, it's because it was live. Um, but if you watch something on demand or maybe even a re-air that is live, but that's also on demand, that will show up then in the, in the TV app, in the up next. Now, to make sure this works, you have to make sure that your apps are connected to the TV app. And when you install a new app, and you start watching something for the first time, you will get a notification that pops up and it'll say, do you want to connect, you know, let's say the Food Network Go app to your TV app? And then you just say connect or allow, whatever it says. And then it will do that deep linking. And sometimes it'll be like, you've just installed four or five different apps and it'll say, you want to connect uh, Lifetime and four more, you know, uh, and you can do that. But it does, it does work when you start watching stuff. And it is really, as I said, I, I just can't express enough. I hope you're getting how awesome that is. To me, it's one of the big differentiating factors between Apple TV and a lot of its competition. Xfinity has started doing this on X1 too, by the way. And they do a pretty good job of it. There's a few apps on X1 that haven't started doing it yet with the X1 system. But, it, you know, that takes time. It took time with Apple also, right? You know, but it's been, Apple's been doing it for a long time and they, they really have it down well. And if in the very, very rare, very unlikely event that something isn't updating in your TV app, just force quit the app and relaunch it. But again, that that hardly ever happens, um, you know, but typically it's updated right away. And again, the nice thing is it's, it's um, across all of your devices, right? That are signed in with the same Apple ID. So, you know, this is when we talk about how to watch TV most effectively, it's always personal preference, but this is how we do it nine times out of 10. When we turn on our television, we go straight to the TV app because that is where we will see everything we've been watching. And had I gone down below that up next section, you'd also see things like recommendation. Well, let me just tell you. Again, I'm not close to my TV now, but I will open it and tell you what's there, and you'll just have to believe me. Uh, I guess you don't have to, but if I go down below my up next uh, row, it says top chart, Apple TV Plus, and these are things like uh, the Ted Lasso and Killers of the Flower Moon, different Apple TV originals. Go down, and this is really cool. So this row is channels and apps. This is made up of all the channels I subscribe to and all the apps that I have installed. So let me just tell you what's here to give you an idea, okay? First, it has the ones that I recently or frequently used or opened up since this was available. And I go through this list, channels and apps. It has Apple TV+, Plus, a and &E, Amazon Freebie, AMC, Animal Planet, Bravo, Discovery, Disney Plus, E, Food Network, Freeform, HGTV, Hulu, Max, PBS Kids Video, Peacock, Taste Made, The CW, TLC. And then it says more to explore. And here are things that I can either subscribe to or maybe I already have them, but I just haven't used them. MLS Season Pass, ABC, Acorn TV, Adult Swim. Act, uh, it, it, what is that? ACC Go. I promise I'm not going to read all of these. Um, just show you some more, though. BBC. Um, let's see what's here that you would recognize. Boomerang, BritBox, um, Cartoon Network, CBS, CBS News, um, Cinemax, uh, let's see, CNN, Comedy Central. So some of these are 
this is a combination of like things I have installed that I just haven't opened yet, but they're available to me because I get them through Xfinity or some of them I'd have to pay for and sign up like BritBox is an Apple TV channel I would separately pay for. And even in that first list, let's go back. So here's, um, let's go, for example. Now, remember, I'm still in the TV app, my friends. I'm not leaving the TV app. So let's go to, oh, here's Max. Um, if I click on Max, it's not going to open the app. It's going to stay in the TV app. And it says, press back, or navigate, press back or navigate back to show sidebar. And then it says, um, up, I go down. Okay, this first one's a, a featured row again. But I go down and it says, up next on Max. This is stuff I've been watching on Max. And we have. Um, the Island Life show that I uh, mentioned to you earlier. We have um, the Pioneer Woman, which is the cooking show, Reed Drummond. Here's... Um, episode th season three, episode two of The Nanny, a sitcom that I like to watch. Uh, here's uh, Girl Meets Farm, that's another cooking show. And uh, here's um, Beachfront Bargain Hunt. So you get an idea anything that we've been watching on Max. And then if I go down, it has top chart of things that are on Max specifically. So in this list, we have True Detective. Friends, one of my favorite sitcoms and my family's favorite. The Big Bang Theory, Rick and Morty, The Sopranos. You get the idea. And if I go down again, just added. And these are movies or shows that have just been added to Max. Featured content. Uh, Marvel. Or Barbie, rather. Excuse me. All of these things are on Max because I clicked on that channel, but I'm not in the Max app yet. I'm still in the TV app. And if I click on something to watch, then and only then will it open the Max app. Okay, now I'm going to press the back button and I'm back in my list of channels and apps. There are two ways you can get your channels and apps like that. One is through the home tab, home category. And the other one is in the sidebar. If I keep going down, all my channels and apps are listed there as well. Now, um, let's go down another row still in the home category. Now on Apple TV Plus. So again, they want to recommend some things for me to watch there. Here's, uh, let's go down a couple more. These are coming to Apple TV Plus. Okay, free for a limited time. And they want me to do MLS season pass. Now, here it says enjoy personalized recommendations based on past plays. And these are for individuals as well as for the whole family based on your family profiles. And so different things that it thinks that we'd like to watch. So they want us to watch Trolls Band Together, the Super Mario Brothers, um, the Lego Movie. There's a bunch of good recommendations here that our family would like, I'm sure. And so we could watch them. If I pick one, like let's say that we decide Okay, we want to watch the Lego movie. So I click on it, and now what I have is I have a button to play it right now, okay? But what's it going to play from? I better double-check and make sure. So I'm going to go down. There's Add to Up Next, so it will put it in that Up Next row without me having to watch it. There's the trailer. I can watch the trailers. Related content. Let's keep going iTunes extras. That's like the DVD bonus content of yesteryear, but it's all digital now. How to watch. And here are the ways that I can watch the Lego movie. The first choice is Apple TV because I've purchased this. We bought this movie. If not, it would say I could buy or rent it, you know, and it would give me the price, but I've already bought it so I can just play it. But also if I go to the right, Actually, that's the only choice for the Lego movie right now. All right, so let's find something else. Let's find something that I... Okay, here is a sort of sci-fi sitcom uh, from Nickelodeon called Henry Danger. This one I know is available in multiple ways. So if I go down, this is episodes, right? Because it's a series. So I can see the whole list of episodes. Play the next episode, remove from up next because it's already in up next. But let's go down to here's the box set, bonus content, 
But I want to see, here's the cast and crew. I want to see how to watch. So I'm going down, 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 down. And this one has multiple choices. My first choice, Apple TV. Again, here it says I can buy the seasons. And it tells me there are five seasons available. Tells me what they cost, or at least, you know, the starting price. If I go to the right, it says Paramount Plus. Open in Paramount Plus app, seasons one through five. That means I can watch the whole thing probably in the Paramount Plus app without having to buy the the series so i can right now start watching it in paramount plus go to the right and this is the apple tv channel version of of paramount plus i can subscribe it gives me that price don't need to do that because i have the app it's also on prime video probably as a, a an amazon prime channel but still it's it's available there it's available on hulu for only seasons four and five are available on hulu though not the whole thing, only seasons four and five. So you can see that there's a number of ways to watch this and it shows you all of them when you pick the content that you want. So it's like a universal. And if you use Siri to search for something or if you use search in the control center or whatever to search for something, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna search across all the apps and channels and streaming services and the iTunes store and everywhere else that it can and give you all the choices as to how to watch that. So, you know, to tell you, well, you can buy this on iTunes or rent it, but it also happens to be on Stars. So if you if you subscribe to Stars, watch it right now. Or it happens to be on um, Disney Plus. You know, the only one, as I said, it won't do this with is Netflix uh, of the of the major ones that it won't do it with. But um, if I go down even further now in the um, home tab uh, home category i have like on your channels and apps channels and then apps. the floor i have sports sports and again i mentioned to you you can pick it's going to give you the option of picking your favorite sports teams and then it'll notify you when they're playing when the game is close all that here i have um see so find there's a whole bunch of stuff i'm skipping over for the sake of time but i'll show you a couple more things uh okay here's some cool ones so this is more recommendations it says if you like and it has girl meets farm that's that cooking show and it has things here like selena plus chef magnolia table um baking the holidays a whole bunch of these you know and then here's another one if you like the lion king because recently we watched the lion king together and so they want us to consider Frozen, Moana, Finding Nemo, Ratatouille, Ice Age, and a whole bunch more. Okay. So these are recommendations. Here it has watch without a subscription. These are things that they'll give you to watch for free. And then here, $4.99 movies. They're, you know, promoting these that are on discount. We can, we can go down and find news. So I have a whole bunch of live news choices here. I can watch ABC News, CBS News, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Bloomberg, CNBC, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, there's seven choices there. Six, seven choices. And If I want to watch one of these, I have to have the app. But if I don't have it, it'll say, hey, you want to download the app? And then what I get is going to depend on the individual app. So something like CBS News is free 24-7. I don't have to subscribe. I don't have to sign in, anything like that. These cable ones like CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC, I might get like 30 minutes a day free. And then it'll say, if you want to watch the rest, sign in with your TV provider. So again, we're back to that TV everywhere where we just have to sign in. And as long as we get that channel in our package, then we can watch unlimited. So again, the, the general rule of thumb is the more that you have, the more you are willing to subscribe to, the more you'll be able to watch. And you really can get yourself set up to a point where it is possible to watch pretty much anything you want, anytime you want.
Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about in this category, and then I think that's probably going to do it. We have a lot to cover next week yet. We have music, photos, FaceTime. Uh, we have AirPlay. We have using your phone as a remote. By the way, you can even find a lost Siri remote using your iPhone. Um, a lot of stuff to cover next week, but I think we're almost at a place today where I want to go to your questions and, and not overwhelm you with anything more. But I, I do want to cover one other thing today before we get instructor comments and, and Q and a, and that is how to, uh, how to navigate during playback. Now, before we even do that, I, I want to say something else too. I want to stress to you cause I haven't spent really any time on it. I want to stress to you how powerful S-I-R-I is on the Apple TV. You can hold down that side button and you can say a whole bunch of different types of stuff, right? Now, it's not going to do everything that she does on other, you know, you're not going to add stuff to your calendar or, you know, those kinds of things, but TV related stuff, you know, and I can say like, for example, show me some good kids movies. And it's different than if I just say, show me kids movies because good kids movies is going to rate them. Or I could say like, show me some, movies about dinosaurs or show me some, you know, so let, let me just try this. Let, let me ask, see, I'm going to hold down the side button here. Show me some good family movies. I let go and it Ratatouille says one. it's got a list here now. So it's got Ratatouille. It has Zootopia, Zootopia the, Incredibles. the Incredibles, Up, and Kanto, Monsters, Monsters Inc., Coco, Moana, and it tells me how long they are. And any of these, I don't know how many there are, but I could click on any of them. I'm just going up and down to navigate through the list, and I could click on any one of them. And then again, it would give me different choices for how to watch them. I'll just press the back button here to get out of that. You can also ask, you know, who, uh, you know, for all kinds of other recommendations. And you can even do something like this you can say, um, play the episode of friends with Reese Witherspoon and, and it will do that. Okay. Um, you can also ask for the weather. So what's the weather like? It's, it's currently cloudy and, and 43 degrees. voiceover said it, it's currently cloudy, cloudy and 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Expect it's it's giving me the whole forecast. Okay, so it, it did a great job of that. You can ask for the time of day. You can ask about home kit accessories if you have smart home devices. Have it adjust your thermostat, unlock your door, or well, unlock might require your iPhone, but you can have it lock your door, close the garage door. You know all these kinds of things. Show you a camera feed, and then like um, of course I could you know tell me a joke. Be careful around stairs. Yeah. They always seem like they're up to something. <laughs> it said, be careful around stairs. They always seem like they're up to something. All right. Yes. This in theory has a very, very dry sense of humor. Good. Okay. Right. So that's, you know, and the reason I brought her up before talking about playback controls is because you can use SIRI during playback. You can say rewind 10 seconds. You can say skip ahead five minutes. You can say start this from the beginning. So all I have to do is press and hold that side button and say start this from the beginning or restart this episode or whatever you want to say. And one of my favorite things that's, that SIRI will do during playback is you can hold down the side button and say, what did he say or what did she say? And what it will do is it'll rewind about 10 or 15 seconds and that way you'll be able to hear again what they said, but it will also turn on the captions for 10 seconds so that somebody could see what they say. And you can set voiceover to automatically speak the captions as well. So then voiceover will read it. And that's really cool too, because if it has like a foreign language with subtitles, you voiceover will read that. You turn that on in your verbosity settings, voiceover will read the English uh, subtitles, or if you've got a Braille display, it'll output them to Braille. I mean, this is amazing, the stuff that this will do. So one of the easiest ways to adjust uh, what's playing is to use that personal assistant whose name I won't say. But what if you want to do it with the remote? All right, so here's where we have to understand that, again, as with iPhone and iPad, sometimes there is a bit of flexibility dependent upon the individual app. 
Apple provides an excellent interface, excellent frameworks for everybody to use standard media playback controls. But sometimes developers will try to kind of reinvent the wheel and they may have a good reason, but that may make certain apps function differently than others. So what I'm about to tell you is the most general for the TV app and other apps that support their way of doing things, but it may not apply to all apps. So don't hold me to this for every app because some of them are a bit different. But the general rule of thumb is if you're playing something and you want to rewind, you can repeatedly click left to rewind or click right to fast forward. And that's actually my favorite way to do it. I think that's the way that works best with voiceover if you can't see it. And for example, even like the Xfinity stream app, if I'm watching something on the DVR and I want to fast forward, I know because when I press the right arrow, I think it fast forwards like 10 seconds at a time. So I know if I press the, the right arrow like 12 times quickly, it's going to put me pretty much at the end of the ad break. And that actually is a better, I, I like that better than using like fast forward on a traditional cable box. It's a lot quicker. I can press that right arrow 12 times real quick. And if I need to press it a 13th time, you know, whatever, but I know I can learn very quickly how many times I need to press it. So I think for a voiceover user, that's the best way to do it. Now, in some apps, you can also press and hold the left or right arrow to continuously fast forward or rewind. You can also press the play pause button. And while it's paused, you will have a timeline which you can scrub through by sliding along or even taking your finger on the track. Uh, click pad and like rotating it in a circle. Okay. Now, when you want to play and pause something, you press the play pause button, obviously, or you can press the center of the click pad to play and pause. And then again, once you're paused, you can like drag your finger along the click pad to, you know, to move through a visible timeline. And again, it depends on the app. Some apps, voiceover will speak the time, which is helpful then. Um, but if not, then it's kind of visual, you know, but you drag it through the timeline. And here's another tip for you. When you get to where you want, click the center of the trackpad. But if you changed your mind, if you drug through the the click pad timeline and you say, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to go back to where I was. Just press the back button and it cancels that. And then it won't it won't jump you to that spot. OK, that is when you're paused again. And it's it's using the scrubber. Now, there are some other things that you can do when content is playing. You touch the, the click pad to bring up on-screen controls. And at this point, if you click down or swipe down while playback is going on, you're going to have a couple times you can press the down button. And one of the most important things you can run into when you press down, I think you press it down twice, click twice, is you're going to get the option to restart the program from the beginning. There's a little extra verbiage. Voiceover will say like S8, E3 or season eight, episode three, whatever, what you're playing. It'll name that first, but then it'll say play from beginning. And you just click that. It starts the whole thing over from the beginning. Very, very convenient. Another thing you get when you click down is the info. And there's even a more details button. So you can see all the seasons and the episodes and stuff. But you get the info, like the description of what you're watching. And if you press the right arrow once you're on info, you can get up next to see all your up next shows while the content is playing. Again, we did that by pressing the down button. Sometimes we may need to press it twice. But we put our finger on the click pad to show the controls. And then we click down and we get this info and the beginning and all that stuff. Now, what if we put our finger on the control on the click pad and we then click up or swipe up? Well, here's where we're going to get our audio and our subtitles and our picture in picture if the app supports it. And what's so important about this is that this is one of the ways to turn on audio description. We will talk more about audio description next week, and it can be turned on from within settings, but this will turn it on on the fly. If I'm watching something right now and I say, boy, I didn't think I was going to need audio description for this show, but it really would be helpful. I'd like to hear what they're doing. All I do is put a finger on the click pad, then I swipe up or click up, and I go left or right to where it says audio, and I can go down then. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't go down. I, I go to where it says audio left and right. And then I click. I click the center button. Then I can go down 
and I will see the different audio tracks. Like it'll have default English and then it might have English AD, right? So I can click on that one and it'll bring up the audio described track instead of the regular track. So this is the way to do this on the fly. So again, you put a finger on the on the click pad and then click either up or down depending on what you want to access. And don't be afraid to go multiple times up, multiple times down and left and right. Worst case scenario, you end up out of the menu. And now when you press left and right, you're rewinding and fast forwarding. In that case, just you know, give it a few seconds and try it again. Or press the back button to go back to what's playing and then try it again. Don't wait for the, you know, the big night when you got all the guests and the big party and everybody's trying to watch something. Practice this. Play with it to get comfortable with it because it really needs to happen while the content is playing. And so you don't want to you know, get yourself nervous because, oh, it's playing and I'm overwhelmed with what's going on. Spend some time trying this first when it really doesn't matter. And then you will be very comfortable with it. You mentioned something about keychain. Second, is that again? Because uh, it showed up on my phone and I don't, I will try to open up the Spectrum app and somehow or another it's choking me. Yeah, so, so keychain, and, and I don't think, that we've ever seen your name in one of our other classes. So you would not have been privy to that. But um, Keychain is an Apple feature that stores securely all of your login credentials, your passwords, your usernames, and so on. And so that when you go to a website or an app, instead of having to enter that password manually, you can just use your face ID or touch ID or your device passcode, and it automatically inserts the password for you. And that does work with Apple TV when you use your iPhone or iPad as the keyboard for it. So if you're interested in learning more about Keychain, uh, I would encourage you to come to our Tuesday sessions. That's a, a different link, but you can find it on our website under free resources, and it's called Tuesdays with TTJ. And that's, you know, a lot of those Tuesday sessions, not all, but a lot of them are strictly help session so you can ask a question about any apple product and we will walk you step by step through the answer and how to get it set up or how to you know so if you want to learn um more about keychain definitely come to one of those because we'll be happy to uh to get you through that i i highly recommend it yes the apple tv app and you yes. say like if i'm in the uh up next category and but i'm way right. over in 25 right and I want to get to that sidebar quickly. Is there a way to get there quickly? The back button. Oh, the back bu button will automatically put me back on that sidebar? Yeah, it'll it'll either put you on the sidebar or it'll put you on the very first item in the up next. You know, it might be a, a situation where you have to do back and then left or something. But yes, it, it will be much, much quicker than having to swipe back through all of the content. Yes. Do you know, like, if I wanted to watch a show... What would be the quick way of getting to the info for it so it'll tell me if it's audio described described or not? Well, of course, as you know, Hulu has the, the hub with audio description. So you know all that stuff is most of them when you go to the um, the show page or the movie page, though, it will automatically read or you can press and hold the play button and it'll read, you know, everything about it. And it'll say if it's got audio description, closed captions, whatever's available. Um, and, uh, you know, the other option is if you can't find it just while it's playing, tap the click pad and then go up to the audio tab and click and see if there's an audio AD track available, a description track available. Uh, as far as making folders, you alluded to earlier, as well as rearranging apps. Are you going to be covering that later? Because I'd really like to have everything in one place in, in some cases. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I think we could go over that in a little more detail next week, probably. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely willing to do that. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it And it's, you know, really, honestly, a very straightforward process mm -hmm. if you decided you were feeling courageous and wanted to try it between now and next week it's kind of just mm -hmm. like when you want to create the folder so you long press the item you know like okay. let's say i want to oh, i okay. want to put you know uh let's say i want to put uh the you know uh cbs app in a in a folder called news or something so mm -hmm. i would i would click and hold on that app and it brings up that menu and i just go down to move to 
I don't hit edit home screen. I hit move to, and it'll give me my existing list of folders. And then there'll be an option that says new folder as well. Uh -huh. So you can either create one or, or if you already have it, you can move it to that. And then if you do want to simply rearrange the home screen, mm -hmm. you long press and then you click edit home screen. And that lets you move the app by swiping or clicking on the click pad. And it'll tell you each time, like it'll say before Netflix, after Hulu or whatever, you know what, like where, whichever direction you're moving, it'll tell you what it's going to be placed before or after. And then when you're done, you just press the back button to finish. Um, so you kind of do it one app at a time. I was wondering about the apps. Are there, you know, some that just can't be navigated or what are the, the easiest to navigate what's been your experience so the um the ones that i mentioned today you know when i talked about like there's the sidebar apps and then there's the tabbed apps those are going to be the two most common types of apps on the apple tv and really the only apps that are not going to conform to that are going to be like really graphical games, which yes, may or may not be able to be navigated with voiceover at all. But, you know, um, if, if it's an app for consuming content, most of them are going to conform to one of those two standards of either it's got a sidebar on the left or it's got tabs across the top. And okay. because of the simplicity of the interface, there are very, very few apps that cannot be navigated. Um, every once in a while, you could find an app. I can't think of any of the major streaming services that, you know, this applies to, but every once in a while you might find an app where it has been designed without voiceover in mind. And, and instead of reading the names of things, it'll just say button, 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 you know, something like that. Uh -huh. But that's really rare. And if the app happens to support the Apple TV deep linking, then it really doesn't matter because you can open the show or the movie from within the TV app and it will start playing for you. So even then, it's not necessarily uh, as bad as it seems. And thanks to everybody for joining us. God bless you all and have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. With We'd like to thank you again for joining didn't get your question answered need additional training send us an email at support at ttjtech.biz or support at stirritup.com and remember stir is spelled with a u that's s-t-u-r-i-t-u-p dot com i'm trainer cliff thanks for joining us and see you next time god bless